guys. Um, I'm gonna do this video on how to make Festival of Lights using a clasp because well, I think it's very simple to take the bangle and turn it into a clasped bracelet. That's a hard word to say, clasped. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I think it's fairly easy. I know that if you're a beginner, that can still seem really intimidating. So I didn't want to leave you behind if bangles aren't your thing and you're having trouble with doing the bangle version. Let me show you how you're going to turn around, do turnarounds and attach a clasp instead. Um, this video is not intended to take you from point A to point B with the entire project. You still are going to need the Festival of Lights video, the original one that shows you all the steps. Um, I will pop a link up so that you can go to that if you need that one. Um, I think a lot of you have Festival of Lights memorized, quite frankly. Uh, although I actually had to go look up my own instructions when I went to go make these samples because it had been so long since I'd actually made one that I'd forgotten. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so I'm going to show you, I'm going to hit the highlights here uh, on making it with a clasp, but I'm focusing on the important parts, which is how you're making the turns at the ends instead of going in one continuous loop. So let me bring you down to the bracelet or to the to the board here. I'm actually wearing the bracelet that I made as a sample for this. You can see that it has a clasp. One of the nice things about doing this is uh, your bracelet does not have to, it, you won't use as many uh, beads. So whatever your top, pe your top embellishment is. In this case, I'm using pearls, but uh, obviously bicones, Swarovski bicones, or any kind of crystal bicone on the top here is gorgeous in this. Uh, you will not use as many when you, when you um, put a clasp on it. So it's a little bit more cost effective, especially like if you're, try if you're selling these, um, this might be the way to go for you. Additionally, you can kind of cheat a little bit on how far or how close together these ends get. Um, the bigger a uh, clasp you use, the more real estate that this takes up. If I added a larger, like a large toggle clasp or something, I could have probably knocked another couple of um, pearls off the, the amount necessary for this bracelet. So. Uh, that's something to take into consideration. And then finally, of course, this would also allow you to make a bracelet adjustable. So in, um, if you attach a length of chain at one end and then a lobster claw on the other, now all of a sudden you have an adjustable bracelet for your customers who might have a uh, different size than the sample that you have. So I'm gonna take this off so we can take a closer look at this. You're going to notice that when you're making this, that it's still going to retain a natural curve to it. So um, you still get that. It, it, it curves so beautifully. You have a little more wiggle room for how wavy it, uh, how, how, yeah, how, how wavy it will get um, before it before it starts getting wavy. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. One of the things that we've learned about Festival Light Spangles over the years is that depending on what kind of seed beads you use, depending on what kind of super duos you use, whether it has a coated super duo, whether the seed bead is Miyuki or Toho, these kinds of things can actually make the bracelet wave back and forth if you're doing the bangle version. That still can happen here, but because it's it's got, uh, it can do this instead of having to be in a particular round shape, you can get away with m more of a difference in the bead sizing before it waves. Now that doesn't mean it's still going to wave on you while you're making it. And that was something that I personally was surprised on when I made this because I need a pretty big bangle. I've got an eight inch wrist here. Uh, a bracelet, because um, I've got the eight inch wrist. While I was making it and adding that first round of pearls before I went and brought the second side up, the pearl round over here was very wavy and it made me so nervous. I was like, oh my God, this is gonna be terrible. But then once I brought in the second side and pulled everything to the center, there is no wave whatsoever to this. 
So uh, I was super surprised that that happened given how wavy that initial round was. Okay, so I think that a lot of you, if you've hated this bangle because of that waviness, the bracelet version with the clasp is gonna be the way to go for you. So let me bring you in on these samples that I've made. Here's how I like to do the clasp at the end. Let me also show you here. I really like to use the wire guards on the ends to protect your thread and to give this a really nice pivot point here for so that you have metal against metal instead of you're trying to stitch into uh, a finding or stitch into a jump ring. Now the problem with stitching into a jump ring if you just attached it straight to the jump ring here is that there is this slot where the jump ring comes together, right? And so if in a perfect world those two ends are nice and flush against each other but sometimes there's just the minusculest little opening between the two ends and because we're working with something as thin as a thread it can pop through that that jump ring opening um, i've had it happen and so that's why if i'm using jump rings i tend to prefer a closed jump ring which is already uh welded together not welded what am i trying to say it's it's Oh my gosh, I can't think of the word, but you know, I know what I mean. It's, it's, it's basically welded together. Um, and so there's no opening for your thread to, to jump out of. But using the wire guards or guardians uh, keeps you from having to deal with that at all. And let me just, if you haven't seen a wire guard before, it's this little U-shaped, horseshoe-shaped thing. On the end here, on both ends, there's a little tube. So I put my needle up through that tube. So you, you'll put your needle and thread through the tube. And then between these two tubes on either end is kind of just this open U channel. And yeah, you can see on this, you can see where the thread is laying nicely along that U channel. So now that thread is completely protected on the end. Um, so I'm using these, these more and more these days on my bracelets. So all of that to say, I'm using it on this. So this would be after the first step on making a Festival of Lights bracelet. Uh, you go ahead and calculate how many super duos you need. Like usual, you do that by just kind of laying it on your wrist and seeing um, how, it, how it fits on your wrist, knowing you have to take into account what kind of clasp that you're gonna add to it. Um, mine did shrink up just a little bit as I was adding all the additional embellishment. So when I originally put this together, let me put this on so you can kind of see, I'll do it off on the top edge here, I think. It was... A little bit closer than this I would say by about a quarter inch it was a little bit closer by a quarter inch when I before I started adding all the upper embellishment so if you're dealing with a really fine measurement that you want you want to go ahead and assume that yours is going to shrink up by about a quarter inch okay so I went ahead and did my seed bead super duo all the way up I added my wire guard here and then brought the second seed bead all the way down to this side. And let me show you how I'm going to navigate this turnaround here. Let's see, my thread is right, coming out right here. So I'm going to now navigate up and around. So when I come up here, I want to make sure that my needle is going through the channel of the wire guard. Then I can flip over and pass my needle through the second little tube there, plus a seed bead, plus a super duo, and then I'm going to come out that second seed bead right there. As I'm pulling this thread, what I want to do is make sure that that thread lays in that channel. Um, I actually Oh, I was able to pop it in. On one of these, 
I was several passes down before I realized that the thread was actually had popped out of this channel and was sitting so that it was visible. And I was able with some maneuvering to take my needle and kind of lever it back up so that it sat in the channel again. But that's just something to watch for. Uh, see, I screw up, so you guys can't, don't have to. <laughs> All right, and so that was just the first super easy turn there. And now you're at the point where you would add three seed beads. We're gonna create those picos. Pass back through the seed bead you're already coming out of then forward so that you're moving, you're coming out of two C beads past. The, that. And you're adding the pico to the top of every other bead. So back through the one, move forward through two. And you'll continue adding all the way down to the opposite end. And then you're just gonna do the same turnaround here where you're gonna go through the wire guard channels and come back on the other side, add the pico all the way down the other side. And that's where this sample is. Barbie's gonna have quite the, the fabulous wrist thing going on here. Okay, so on this one I have not done my turnaround, but let's do that now. So I'm coming out of the first, uh, channel right there. I'm going to pass down through the second. And I know why I did this because I wanted to show you the cheater way to get up to the tip of this uh, outside pico to start adding the uh, pearl or the crystal. So I'm going through the wire guardian, through the first seed bead, through the super duo. And then I stop. Make sure that that thread sits on up in that channel. There we go. So what I do, did instead of going through that other, this, the next seed bead is here, I'm just gonna pop straight up through the bead on the side of the Pico. And this is a, if you're a purist, this is a beading no-no right here that I just added a new thread path from this hole to this bead. But y'all, you can't see it. So what difference does it make? <laughs> So I've started doing the cheater path and now I'm going to get my thread coming out that tip bead and then here is where we are picking up a 15 and a pearl and a 15 and I am passing through the next tip bead and we're going to do that all the way down to the end. You probably won't notice any wave. Well, we might get to the wave by the end of this pass. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep going so we can see. I would love to show you what it looks like so that you don't freak out the way I freaked out. <sighs> okay, it wasn't a true freak out. It was just like a, uh-oh. <laughs> So you can see it a, a little bit. This one is kind of popping up a little bit taller than the others. Getting a little bit so you can kind of um, put it on the edge so you can see that wave happening right here. So I just don't want it to, to throw you because it will come out in the wash. Almost to the end. go. So that's the last one on this side. And if I lay it down, you can see where, you know, it definitely does not sit straight. You got a big hump right there, a big wave. But like I said, once you do the other side and you're pulling this all to the center and then it starts 
cupping, all that wave will be gone. Okay, so let me just kind of show you on this side with that cheater path how you're going to turn around. We're going to do the same thing just in reverse. So we're going to come down the side bead and then I'm going to just pop through that super duo and up in to the channel of the wire guard. And you'll turn around and do the other side and pull it together. So then you've got these beautiful wire guards and, you know, depending on what clasp you use, in this case, the holes of the clasp that I were, was using were flat. If it's a vertical hole, you might end up having to add, use two jump rings to attach, uh, attach your, um, your clasp if it's in the opposite direction. But this is a fabulous way to really pr give a professional finish to your piece. And I got to tell you, I'm really kind of feeling these Festival Lights bracelets all over again. So let's see. I wonder how many I can make in the next week. How many colorways I can come up with. You know, I got to go. I'm really busy because... I need a whole armload of these bracelet version ones. I might like these better than the bangles, y'all. Wow. Tell me what you think. Happy beating. Mm -hmm.